Here we are today. It is Wednesday in the middle of the COVID-19 episode, and we are talking to my friend and amazing mom, homeschooling mom, author, Gay Birch, uh, has had multiple years experience in homeschooling, has gotten her kids through elementary, high school, they've gone to college and graduated, still has a high schooler. Um, so in a nutshell, our, our objective today is just to give you some tips, some encouragement, some insights maybe you didn't have before, before you were given this new responsibility of homeschooling or interacting with your children in a school environment that uh, you hadn't had before, and just making it a successful experience for you. I guess that's the key thing, is allowing you to feel that you are experiencing success. And I, I was a homeschooler myself. I know that oftentimes we think that we're not smart enough, we don't know enough, mm -hmm. we don't know the curriculums today. Uh, I've had several people say, I don't understand Common Core. Um, and here's what I always say, what do you do know? You know a lot. You know a lot more than you give yourself credit for, and you know a lot about life skills. So um, I just want to say thanks to Gay for being here, and Gay, i just wondering what comes to mind when you think about people being put into this new role of orchestrating school at home, sometimes with multiple ages and and feeling like they're accomplishing what that role entails. Well, I think one of the differences right now that people are going through that you and I, Charlotte, did not go through is the fact that we had control over what we assigned to our children, what curriculum we chose, what we wanted them to, uh, to do, um, obviously, they did a basic third grade curriculum, fifth grade curriculum, that kind of thing. But we knew what we were getting into. And so for all of you out there who don't know what you're getting into, I would just encourage you to not feel overwhelmed, to take it one day at a time, and to enjoy it. It's, it's a new road, and really, it can be super enjoyable. Maybe not every day, every moment, but I think you're going to look back at this time and remember it with fond memories if you don't overwhelm yourself with worry. Good point. Good point. Don't overwhelm yourself with worry. Embrace the opportunity mm -hmm. in this time with them in a unique way that you definitely will look back with fondness on and say, remember when. Yeah. And they will as well. And unique. I, I like that word because your journey is unique and your journey is completely different from your child's schoolmate who's doing the same thing at home because every home is so different. Every child is so different. Every parent is so different. So you, you can't compare. You can't compare. And I think that might be a hardship too. You might talk to um, somebody else whose child is a schoolmate of your child's and they say, oh, this is great and it's going so well, it's so easy. And don't, don't, even, don't even go there with comparison because you can't compare when there's so many different variables. You just can't. Do your own thing and enjoy. You be you. You be you, let them be them. and. Yeah, that's that's a good, good piece of advice. Mm -hmm. Don't compare. You be you. you no, know, I've heard some people ask about scheduling. You know, did you do your homeschooling all in the morning part, the afternoon? Let them do it throughout the day. Um, how, how do you get it all done? Do you have some kind of systems in place or procedures that you follow day to day to keep everybody on track? What are your thoughts around that, Gay? Um, well, for us, we started on time. We 
which for the high schoolers was before breakfast at 6.45 in the morning. For elementary age kids, we started at 8 o'clock, had breakfast at 7.30, but that's what we did. That might not be the best for you. I would say, however, um, that probably across the board in general to start earlier and get the yucky subjects done first would be best. If you can accomplish the majority of your children's schoolwork before lunch, that would be best. Um, they're fresher, their minds are not already set on uh, whining and bad attitudes and all that as early in the morning as later in the day could possibly bring about. <laughs> good point, good point. And you said yucky subjects, but what came to mind for me is maybe more intense subjects, more things that you need to wrap your head around, like maybe math for some people is more challenging than others, or maybe science, and yet others that's easier. Um, so weigh it out. What, yeah. what comes most challenging, what comes easiest, and spread it out accordingly that way, and do maybe more of the interactive, fun things in the afternoon. But you know what, what comes to mind for me is all of the subjects can be interactive. So not limiting mm -hmm. oneself to just following, you know, uh, a stack of papers, if you will. Um, but intertwining with that some, maybe some games or some real life things like uh, with math, cooking, make, making something together and having them measure things out. Uh, what are some things that come to mind for you, Gay, when you think about how you intertwine games? And I guess math and science come to mind, first of all, for me around those two. Well, I think if you were to talk to my children, um, they would have a lot of fond memories, but at school. So a lot of times I was just, let's get it done, click, 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 click. Um, I think my kids' strengths were where my strengths were because I'm the teacher. So they were possibly stronger in English um, and math than they were in science. Those of you out there probably have paperwork that you have to accomplish. And I would say that you can uh, incorporate into a game Play a game instead. Um, there's so many number games where they have to count, where they have to add, where they have to multiply. Um, get those games out. Not video games, interactive games that you can do with them or they could do with each other. I personally didn't do tons of fun stuff all the time, but man, if I just had to do it for a month and I could look back, I would take advantage of this time. And I was thinking as you were talking about building in different games, you had mentioned Yahtzee before, um, and I can't remember the other games that you had mentioned <clears throat> where you can. Parcheesi. Parche that's right, Parcheesi, chess, uh, things that make the mind go. Yeah. And are interactive and, and uh, have cause for putting together things mentally, which is what you're working on them is learning and strategizing and so forth, which is a life skill, uh, mm -hmm. not just learning the math and memorizing. I was also thinking in terms of, of uh, topics like English or literature, depending on where they are and um, how you could play things like uh, charades or password or something like that mm -hmm. to learn spelling and uh, learn word meanings and <clears throat> incorporate into reading, maybe taking turns reading out loud, those kinds of things come to mind. Uh, again, <clears throat> taking the time to make it fun because it can be, it can be interactive and fun. It's a short window of opportunity um, that you can take advantage of making that connectedness mm -hmm. more. And it will allow you looking at it in the perspective of a, a microcosm of their whole education 
where you will be engaged to a point that you'll understand more of what they're doing when school does resume. Uh, so that's, that's another um, extra benefit that, that you'll be able to find you have from all of this as well. Um, I, was, I was thinking, Charlotte, one of the things that I tell my kids when they go off to college is um, how important it is that they communicate with their professors, that their professor would be able to pick them out and know them by name, especially if they're struggling in that class or they're feeling overwhelmed or whatever it may be. Um, I think the teachers now are, um, they are overwhelmed as well, but they want their kids the best for their kids. They want their kids to be learning while they're out of the classroom. And I, I don't know, but I probably guarantee a huge amount of teachers out there have given their information to the parent or to the child to uh, message if they're having problems or questions. And if that's the case, if you have a child um, whose teacher has given them your inform you know, their information that you can message them or email them or whatever, have your child do that. Have your, walk them through it, do it often. Just, hi, I hope you're okay. This is what we did today. I'm really struggling with this. Do I have to do all 10 of these? Could I just do three? That kind of thing. Just communicate. And I think the kids will get into it more thinking uh, that they still have their teacher out there. That's a great point, Gay. Um, and it's something that I talked about uh, yesterday in my work from home scenario. Uh, and that is the communication. Keep the communication open. Mm -hmm. And the teachers are just hungry to help. Um, I have several folks in uh, my sphere that are teachers, they want to help. Uh, and if you're reaching out saying help, or here's what I'm doing, what do you think? They're going to be inspired to connect with you and give you what you need. So you'll stay on track for yourself, mm -hmm. you know, and, and feel yeah. reassured that you're on the right track, if you will, and moving in the right direction. So Yes, I'm sure. I, I don't know, but I'm sure you have connections with teachers and take advantage of that. They really do want you to succeed. They really do want your child to succeed and they do want you to know they're there to help. And, and absolutely, they're an overwhelmed too because they still have a curriculum to go through. They don't know exactly how the school system is going to allow that to happen or uh, all these things they're still muddling through as well. So it's, it's a group uh, process. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, uh, it's, it's nice that you made that awareness because sometimes when we're, we're at home, we're with the kids, we're overwhelmed in this microcosm, we're forgetting that there's a bigger picture and there's other people out here that are overwhelmed and wanting all of this to go well too. So reach out, plug in, and uh, I think you'll be amazed at the feedback and help you'll get from that resource. Um, and I was just going to ask you, what, what opportunities do you see in all of this? And that's a huge one right there is connection. And, and I, I think that's a beautiful gift that you're teaching them of connecting with their teacher now and forever to let them know this is what I'm working on, this is what I'm challenged with, am I on track, what else do I need to work on? It keeps that engagement open and allows the teacher to see that this child really is trying. You know, this, they're, they're doing the best they can with what they have and with a little bit of coaching or counseling, they could, you know, get them on the right track or compliment them for being on the right track already. Just do more of what yeah, you're doing yeah. right now sort of thing. So uh, that's, a, that's a beautiful gift to teach them and give them uh, at this time as a life skill on going forward. Um, let's see, there's another thought I had here and that is, um, you know, I always say homeschooling, 
doing school at home, even with their home sick for a period of time and you're helping them with homework, you can't goof it up. It's kind of like your computer. They're really hard to break anymore. Just jump in, do the best you can. They already have a foundation. You laid part of it, a good, good part of it. And the schooling they've been through so far has put another layer there. So you're just putting another, you know, you're yes. kind of like putting, filling in the cracks on the tile, you know, with the mortar. So don't put so much pressure on yourself that you're just going to ruin them for the rest of their life over this next X number of weeks. If this is just another opportunity of learning and growing in their whole journey of life. So you, you're, you're going to be just fine. I guess that's the, the, the mantra you have to have. They're going yes. to be fine. You're going to be fine. Just keep engaged. Keep breathing. Keep connecting with, mm -hmm. uh, you know, your foundation every day so that you can go out there being your best you to bring about their best learning scenario. And yeah. it's something you mentioned uh, too, Gay, that I thought was priceless was around working one-on-one -on -one with them. Can you expand on that a little bit? Well, I think too that um, now you, you have to understand that every situation is different, like I said. Sure. So I don't know if I'm, if I'm talking to somebody whose child has an enormous workload of just hard copy papers they're going through or if they're just having to go on the computer for an hour a day or the mom has nothing. And so there's, there's so many different scenarios. Very true. But if, if it's frustrating and you're sending your child off to do their schoolwork, go do your schoolwork, go do your homework, get to your schoolwork, that can be so frustrating. Just sit down and do it with them. Just do a math problem with them. They do one, you do one, go on to the next. Have everybody sitting around, lean over to the next child, do something with them. Just give them an answer. Just don't worry so much about the outcome. You want to just think about the current, and that is that they're learning. The mm -hmm. fact that they get to engage with you during the day, you might think is, like Charlotte said, going to ruin them for life. It's not. You are their parent. You are their grandparent. You have a lot to offer them. I also think what, what would be very helpful, and I think that this didn't help me until probably four or five years into homeschooling, was education repeats itself so much. And you, you don't have to worry. Your child, whatever is on their table, I'm talking elementary kids, let's say through seventh grade or something, whatever they're getting right now or is assigned to them right now, they're going to see it again next year. It's going to be repeated in history. It's going to be re repeated in science. It's going to be repeated in math, um, English rules. They're just going to be learning a little bit more. But education repeats itself every single year. So just really enjoy yourself. If if you're folding laundry and you have a child who's working on adding, have them fold laundry and just say, okay, I have seven socks, you have nine, who has more and why? You know, they might say, I have nine, you have seven, and nine is more than seven, and whatever. But cooking, you can add cooking to your, um, we didn't do that as much. I mean, I'm a real mom, and you know, when it got down to it, it was like, let's just get your schoolwork done. But we did have, Lots of good times too. And I just think it's, it's a short period of time. I hope you really take advantage of it. Really take advantage of it. It's good. Homeschooling is good. Good advice. Good advice, Gay. And uh, you're absolutely right. You can, just, you can just weave it into everything that you do day to day. And, and mm -hmm. the one final takeaway I'd like you all to remember is that you're going to be teaching them life skills that they're not going to get at school. Uh -huh. That is invaluable for life. So when you're teaching them about helping you fold the clothes and count the socks, they're learning about laundry. When you're teaching them about measuring out and doing math, they're learning how to cook or prepare to cook or bake and how to open the oven or close it or whatever there's so many things and then if you help have them 
watch over as you do any bookkeeping for balancing your checkbook or or balancing your family budget those are things those are life skills that they need to operate way mm -hmm. more than common core so just know that you have a arsenal of things that they can learn that they won't learn at school so take advantage of this time to incorporate all the things that you do day to day into their learning and because those things aren't necessarily going to be repeated so much as gay said their math will be and their science will be and their history and their english so remember that you are way smarter than you think you have way more life experience than than you are aware of and can distribute that well gay do you have any parting thoughts for our listeners today um no i i really don't just just put some things on the back burner enjoy this time things are off the schedule there's no birthday parties and baby showers and sad no weddings and things like that you know i know it's sad for people but um the nice thing is you do have time yeah to do this so i just just enjoy if you're not enjoying it and you are frustrated just be done be done for the day start fresh the next day or take a long break or whatever but yeah, and just know that everybody gets frustrated with their kids. Everybody loves their kids. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy. Very true. And you know, if you are frustrated, just know that I'm here. Reach out. Yes. Message me below. We can call, text, do a Zoom call like this together. I can walk you through a process of finding your own personal insights in this experience that may be very helpful to you as mm -hmm. you carry on with this new assignment and in a new kind of reality that we're all in so thanks all for being here thank you so much gay gay is also an author i'm going to put a link to her book below and uh, she's had 23 years experience in homeschooling is still doing it and she's put together some tips and insights and did you have something you wanted to share about the book that you have in the pamphlet, Gay, that I'm missing? Uh, my book is a parenting book for younger children. Uh, very easy read, I'm told. Um, and my homeschooling booklets, which uh, my book is on Amazon, my homeschooling booklets are on eBay, just two booklets of the things I wish I had known from the beginning about homeschooling. So um, very helpful, free shipping. So yeah, look them up and Charlotte will give you the link. Perfect. Okay, guys, be well, embrace this time together and reach out if you need more help and direction. See you next time.